happened to him? <laughs> well, no, Tech. Joe's just started a job of smoothing out the engine idle. Let's go and give him a hand. So I just can't seem to get this engine to idle smoothly. Go back a little, Joe, and bring us up to date on what you've done so far. Well, I've made a preliminary check to see if the carburetor can be blamed for the rough idle. As a starter, I turned the idle mixture screws in to see if the engine would stall from too lean a mixture. Next, I turned the screws out to see if the engine idle would become rough from too rich a mixture. So I know I'm getting a change of mixture by changing the adjustment, but it just won't smooth out. I even took the screws out to see if they were damaged. You know, a ridge on the taper if the screw has been jammed too tightly into the seat. But see, they're perfectly okay. Now here's an idea, Joe. Maybe you're playing around with the wrong gadget. Quite often, the carburetor's the last thing you ought to touch. On a case of rough idle, Tech? On that, and lots of cases of poor engine performance, Joe. Tech's got a good point. After all, the carburetor is mainly a mixing bowl that feeds fuel and air to the engine in the proper proportions. And tell me, what would you guys check before you begin to concentrate on the carburetor? Mostly tune-up items, Joe. And I'd start with what's needed for a good spark to fire the mixture. Yeah, Joe, check those plugs. Are they right for the kind of driving the owner does? Are they gapped to 35 thousandths? Are the electrodes in good condition? And use a round wire gauge to check that gap. Handle those plugs carefully, too. You'd be surprised how easy it is to bump the electrodes when you're installing the plugs and close up the gap. Right, Tech. And here's something else. Push the wires down fully on the spark plug terminals. Sometimes the rubber boot prevents a good connection. Push the wires firmly into the distributor cap towers, too. Good connections are vital. Then, push the rubber cups over the distributor towers. If the cups are too close to the ends of the wires when you make the connections, they may interfere with the connections. Never thought of that, Don. Good idea. Another thing. See that the distributor points are set at 18 thousand. Check the rotor, too, to see that it's the right one, not too short. Look for evidence of arcing or cracks in the cap. And that brings up the matter of ignition timing. This V8 engine, for example, calls for a setting of four degrees before top dead center, plus or minus four degrees. Four degrees before, plus or minus four. Okay. On Plymouth V8s with the four-barrel carburetor, Set timing at top dead center. And don't guess at those settings, Joe. Use the timing light and be sure. Yeah, and use that light to make sure timing advances when the throttle opens. If it doesn't advance as it should, remove the distributor for thorough checking on a tester. Check both the mechanical and vacuum advance. Another point to check along the electrical line is reverse polarity due to incorrect connections of the primary leads at the coil. That'll cause weak ignition. Don ought to tell you how to spot that, Joe. Well, on Plymouth and Dodge, Joe, the lead from the coil negative terminal is connected to the ballast resistor. Another lead goes from the resistor to the primary terminal on the distributor. Now, in addition, the lead from the coil positive terminal goes to the horn relay. I see. That's for Plymouth and Dodge. Right. On DeSoto and Chrysler engines, the lead from the coil negative terminal should connect directly to the primary terminal on the distributor. But the lead from the positive terminal of the coil goes to the ballast resistor. Uh, can you keep them straight? I think so, Don. You better keep them straight if you want to stay out of trouble. And here's something else. Look those leads over for loose connections, which could cause high resistance and result in poor ignition. Check around the ballast resistor especially. Okay, Tech. Will do. Say, getting away from electrical items, always make it a point to check the manifold heat control valve for sticking. Wiggle it. See that it works freely at all times, even when it's hot. A valve that's stuck open won't let the intake manifold hot spot heat up soon enough. This will cause stumbling and hesitation during warm-up. A valve that's stuck closed will cause the hot spot to overheat after the engine is warmed up. This will lead to loss of power, percolation, and hard, hot starting conditions. You can't check that heat valve too often, Joe. Look it over every time the car comes in. If necessary, free it up so it'll work easily. Okay. Any other tips? Yeah, Joe.
check for air leaks into the intake system. The screws that hold the carburetor sections together, for example. You mean the screws between the air horn and main body? Right, and particularly those that hold the main body to the throttle body. In, in addition, check the stud nuts holding the carburetor to the intake manifold to be sure they're tight. Now, besides that, check the manifold to cylinder head attaching bolts to see that they're good and snug. Anything that admits air will upset the mixture ratio and cause a rough engine idle. If the car's equipped with power brakes, better check for vacuum leak at the hose connection on the intake manifold and the brake unit. The brake pedal linkage might be improperly adjusted too. If so, the vacuum intake valve in the brake unit might be held partially open. That's a good suggestion, Tech. That could be a hard to find cause of a rough idle. If the engine uses mechanical tappets, it's always smart to check valve lash to see if it's up to specifications. That can upset valve action, and it needs to be right before idle will be smooth. Golly, I'm beginning to realize that there are a lot of possible causes of rough engine idle. You're so right, Joe. It's smart to check all these points first. Then you can concentrate on the carburetor. Uh, keep in mind, Joe, that what you do for a rough idle on this car, you do on any car. Follow the same general procedure, no matter what kind of carburetor's on the engine. You mean make the same general checks, whether it's a single, double, or four-barrel carburetor? Right. Also, whether it's a six- or eight-cylinder job, with or without power flight. Uh, suppose we look at the choke valve, Joe. As you know, we have to be sure the choke is wide open when the engine is warm before we can adjust engine idle speed. If the choke valve were not wide open, the engine would run on a mixture that's far too rich. This would cause poor fuel economy as well as rough idle. What would you do if the choke were not wide open? Well, I'd first check the choke coil setting. It may be too rich. Besides that, the choke vacuum passage to the piston may be partially plugged by foreign matter. Or there could be an air leak at the plug in the end of the vacuum piston cylinder. That would prevent full vacuum being applied to the piston. Right. Now, you can test that by smearing some oil on the plug. If it's drawn in around the plug, you know there's a leak. In that case, replace the air horn. On four-barrel carburetors, be sure the screws which hold the choke housing to the air horn are tight. I see. All these things, then, mean getting the right amount of heat to the choke coil so it'll work properly. Right, Joe. After you get through with the choke, you better see that the fast idle adjusting screw is off the fast idle cam. Good point, Tech. If that fast idle screw isn't off the cam when the choke valve is open, check the linkage for binding. You better check the adjustment of the choke connector rod, too. It could be off. Right. But for now, somebody please turn the record. Meanwhile, we'll look up at the commenter to check the idle speed adjustment. Now, before you go any farther, Joe, here's a tip. Since this car is equipped with power flight, loosen the transmission throttle linkage temporarily. This will ensure a complete return of the carburetor throttle to the idle throttle position. Okay. Do we set the idle speed now? We sure do. With the engine at normal operating temperature and the tachometer connected, Set the idle speed adjusting screw for an idle speed of 475 to 500 RPM. Finally, adjust the idle mixture screws to get the smoothest idle you can. Shoot for an idle you know the customer will find acceptable. And don't forget, adjusting the mixture screws might change the idle speed. So if necessary, go back to the idle adjusting screw and readjust it to get the proper idle speed. Text right. Remember that it takes a combination of the right idle speed setting and the proper mixture adjustment for the smoothest engine idle. After you get the correct idle speed, you can readjust the transmission throttle linkage and tighten it. Then, recheck your idle speed setting to be sure it didn't change. I see, Don. Is that about it on rough idle? Just one more thing, my boy. You still should check fast idle adjustment. Do this with the engine hot, and by means of this fast idle adjusting screw, Don can give you the pitch. Yeah, with the ignition off, hold the choke valve closed. Open and close the throttle so the fast idle screw bears against the high point of the fast idle cam. Release the choke 
and then start the engine. Because the choke coil is hot, the choke valve will drop open. Adjust the fast idle screw to give a speed of 12 to 1400 RPM. Remember, setting fast idle too high causes a jerk when the transmission is engaged. Setting it too low causes stalling during warm-up. Boy, you fellas sure know your stuff. This engine idle is much smoother now. There's nothing else that could still cause rough idle, is there? Oh, yes, there is. How about it, Don? Oh, yeah, Joe. Sometimes you have to check the condition and the position of the throttle valves. If they've been damaged by careless handling or are set so that both of them don't close tightly, you won't get a smooth idle. There's a preliminary test you can make for misaligned throttle valves without having to remove the carburetor. Check the ignition timing with the line to the distributor vacuum advance unit disconnected. If timing is the same with the line connected and disconnected, the throttle valves are probably in proper position and undamaged. But if timing varies when the line is connected and disconnected, or the idle is still rough, the chances are the throttle valves are not in proper position in the bores. One is partially open while the other is closed. Now, uh, in a case like that, remove the carburetor. Back out the idle speed screw and see if both valves close tightly. If they don't, loosen the screws and reposition the valves so they do. Save yourself a headache, Joe. When you remove a carburetor from an engine, always put it on a repair stand on the bench. I sure will, Tech. That stand protects the throttle valves, huh? That's the idea, Joe. Now, that about covers what you can do to correct a case of rough engine idle. I've run into another occasional condition on a DeSoto four-barrel job that you ought to get acquainted with. It's a condition that's associated with starting a cold engine. I call it a loading condition. The owner reports that the engine starts, runs a few seconds, stalls, then won't start again. Often the batteries run down trying to restart the engine. Now, what's behind it, Don? Too rich a mixture, Joe. It's so rich that the engine can't burn it, so the engine stalls. As you probably know, the choke valve is closed completely when the engine is cold. A rich starting mixture is drawn into the cylinders. This fires and the engine starts. Right away, then, the vacuum piston connected to the choke valve pulls the valve open slightly. This piston pulls against the tension of the choke coil. It's beginning to dawn on me. Are you trying to say that if vacuum piston action is delayed, the choke won't be pulled open when the engine starts to run? Exactly, my boy. That's why the cylinders keep pulling in a mixture too rich and the engine stalls. Your job is clear then, Joe. Check the vacuum piston for freedom of movement. If the piston is stuck, clean out the housing and the vacuum passage. With a vacuum gauge connected to the choke housing, you should get a vacuum reading of about nine inches when the engine idles and the choke is wide open. A reading lower than seven inches points to some obstruction or leak in the vacuum passage. Check the plug in the end of the vacuum piston cylinder, too. A leak here will lower the vacuum pull. Smear some oil on the plug and see if it's sucked in. I suppose a cracked choke housing could be at fault, too, huh? Right you are, Joe. It would not only let cold air leak in, but would reduce the amount of heated air drawn in so the choke won't open when it should. And where a loaded engine fails to start, pressing the accelerator to the floor operates the choke on loader. That leans out the mixture so the engine will start. Now, if the unloader doesn't appear to operate, there's a story on how to adjust it in this reference book. Okay, will do. Now, are there any other carburetor conditions you fellas want to talk about? Oh, yeah, Joe. I'd like to cover an occasional report of surging between 30 and 40 miles an hour while driving at a constant speed. Some owners say it feels like the car is being towed by a rubber band. The band stretches, contracts, and then stretches again. What causes that condition? Dirt? Well, dirt could be a factor. But it's funny how the very things we check for rough idle can also cause surging. The manifold heat control valve, ignition timing, spark plugs, air leaks. By all means, be sure the carburetor assembly screws are tight. Also, in some of the dual carburetors, 
See that the discharge cluster screws are good and snug, too. If all these items check out, look inside the carburetor. On some of these two-barrel carburetors, Joe, you can change the step-up rods to a size one thousand smaller than the ones you remove. I see. Give it a little richer mixture, huh? On Chrysler and DeSoto four-barrel jobs, new metering rods with a different size step in the lower speed range are available to relieve this surging condition. Right. Now, in case you come across a hesitation or flat spot on acceleration, here's what you can do. Wait a second, Don. At what speed would that hesitation be noticed? Oh, it could come in anywhere between 20 to 50 miles an hour, Joe. In either case, there's a temporary starving of the mixture right when you want more power for acceleration. Sounds like it might be the accelerator pump system, huh? Well, maybe. But you want to remember that the pump discharge is more effective when accelerating in the low speed range. Of course, you'd want to check the pump with the engine off to see that the fuel is being discharged straight out into the Venturi as steady streams. But you'll probably have to look beyond the pump system. Yeah, Joe. Check all the tune-up items we've covered on those other conditions. And if they check out okay, then you can concentrate on the carburetor. Right. On Chrysler and DeSoto four-barrel jobs, using the same metering rod we mentioned a moment ago has improved the condition. On these, and in fact on all carburetors, check the linkage between accelerator pedal and accelerator shaft. Make sure the pedal travels far enough to fully open the throttle valves. I see, Don, and thanks. You and Tech have been a big help. You'll find more help in that reference book, Joe. Be sure to look it over. That I will, Tech. These books help me a lot. That's what they're designed to do, fella. The more help you get, the better you can help our customers. <laughs>